Welcome to r slash petty revenge, probably the most uh, hateful but fun to read subreddit. Let's get into it. My roomie didn't know I spoke Spanish and tried to talk behind my back. For context, I'm Afro-Latina, but most people just assume I'm African-American and don't speak Spanish. Well, the other day, I was getting ready and I overheard my roommate on the phone with her mum talking in Spanish. And most importantly, they were talking some mad crap about me. Here's some more context. I have a long-term boyfriend and more often than not, I spend the night at his house. But I think it's super important to keep my own place as well for my own independence. But I guess to her, she assumed I'm a streetwalker and stay with a different man every night. Her words. So what do I do? I burst out in the living room and say, Wow, I didn't know you spoke Spanish too. In Spanish. And y'all, this girl's face turned red. She just smiled and said, Oh, yeah. And said goodbye to her mum and went to her room. <laughs> the amount of money I would pay to be there in that situation. Oh my gosh, you must have felt so embarrassed. My girlfriend cheated and then asked to date us both. I took our entire apartment with me on my way out. It was my first serious relationship and we had a dog, cat and an apartment together. I was extremely dedicated to her and I paid most of the bills and did all of the life management stuff. Tip look for an equal. I paid for basically every furnishing in the home despite her making more. My ex was horrible with money. My ex had met some girl online and I caught her cheating. She gaslit me until I snooped and found the proof. She then had the gal to ask me if she could date us both while she figure out what she wanted. I was done. I booked movers. Moving day came. They packed everything except her bed, desk, clothes, and two $5 IKEA coffee tables, and goodbye every single piece of kitchenware. Here's where I got really petty. I left the paper plates and plastic cutlery, but took everything else. When I left the apartment, it had no sofa, no dining table, no chairs, no wall decor, no bathroom towels, no shower curtain, no bathroom materials except one roll of paper. I didn't even leave the soap in the kitchen because I'd bought that. And I didn't even want the shower curtain. It was just a dollar store find. But I wasn't about to let her keep it. The look on her face when she realized I was leaving was stunned. Because she didn't realize what that would mean for her. She told all of her friends that I was such a mean man for taking all of our stuff that only I paid for. She had the gal to expect to cheat on me and expect to be allowed to keep things I had bought. She then, as I was moving out, asked me to stay, but when I refused, she lined up a new roommate with an aggressive dog who basically destroyed the apartment. She was evicted three months later for non-payment of rent and spent months living at a campsite. I was even nice and had left her a letter detailing the bills and when they were due. Made no difference. She's tried to be friends a few times since, seemingly forgetting how we ended things. I hear she's cheated on all her new partners repeatedly since we were together. Good riddance. I took the dog. I paid for the dog, but the cat was hers pre-relationship. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think that's just the definition of petty revenge. I think if, if people want to know what petty revenge means, we should all tell them this story. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I planted my stuffed cheese bread with meat so my vegetarian roommate stopped eating my food without asking. I posted this on r slash AIBA and people were telling me this sub would love it. So here it is. As the title says, my roommates are vegetarian and they still always eat my food. Our lease is almost up and I'm moving out in a couple of weeks anyway. A couple of weeks ago, I got some cheese bread from a pizza place and only had a few pieces. I left the rest in the fridge so I could have it when I got home from work the next day. Next day I get home, grab the box of cheese bread, and open it. They left me one piece. Mind you, I ate only a few pieces the previous day, so I had about more than half remaining. I asked if they ate it, and they admitted to it because they were drunk. They always just eat my food if it can fit in their vegetarian diet, and they never asked me. Just a few months ago, I had bought 10 boxes of mac and cheese because they were on sale, 10 for 10. They ate 8 boxes and I only had 2. That was supposed to be a last resort option for me for when I didn't have enough money or didn't feel like making food. And they never once offered me any of my food when they made it. So today, I just went and got some pizza, bread, and wings. 
already knew they were going to eat the pizza and just take the meat off. However, I ended up getting stuffed cheese bread and I asked if they could put pepperoni inside of it. The restaurant agreed. So now I'm just waiting until my roommates get home, eat my food without telling me, just so I can enjoy the satisfaction of telling them that they ate meat. Don't eat my food if you're not going to ask. Edit. For those blowing up my DMs wanting an update, they did end up eating the bread, but it was while I was sleeping, so I had no chance to confront them. I'm currently on my way to work. We'll update more. Oh my gosh, I, I need to know what happened. <laughs> also, you are evil, man. This is evil villain behavior. <laughs> I accidentally scammed a scammer. I had a $1,500 item on eBay once, and someone bought it. I was on top of things, so I shipped it out the same day. The next day, the person messaged me saying to send it to a different address than what was on their account. I knew that scam, but I had already sent it. Hmm. I expected them to try to get their money back, so I went to the post office and filled out the form to recall the item. A few days later, I had it back and put it up for sale again. I kept my eye on the scammer's account, waiting for them to claim that they never got the item, and one day saw that they deleted their account and I got to keep the money. I ended up getting $3,000 for that thing. Thanks for the extra money, scammer. <laughs> if I were you, I would have just kept that money and took that to the grave. I'd be terrified some eBay employee would read this and they'd find out somehow, I know they would. I, 27 female, deleted my mother-in-law off Facebook after she wasn't happy about me being pregnant. I had my baby a few months ago and my mother-in-law has not been supportive. She doesn't talk to me and has told my husband that our child will never address her as grandma. My mother-in-law is very emotionally manipulative with a victim complex. I'm not someone that placates her delusions of her being more important than she is. Our relationship is strained and we are low contact with her. My husband has gone to therapy over the years of emotional and physical abuse he had to endure from her. Over the weekend, we went over to my husband's grandma's house for breakfast. Mother-in-law was there. After her ignoring me for most of the time, I heard my mother-in-law and my husband's grandma talking in another language. I'm not fluent, but I can get by. My mother-in-law was complaining about me, and my husband's grandma told her she needed to be nicer to me. My mother-in-law began to cry, saying, I just can't do it. I just can't. She deleted me off Facebook, and I won't forgive that. My mother-in-law is a very vain individual and needs the validation from Facebook to be able to function. I had deleted her off of Facebook after we announced at Thanksgiving my pregnancy. My parents hadn't been able to make it to Thanksgiving because my dad had broken his ankle. She was saying, Maybe your mom and dad didn't come this year because your dad's really beating your mom. I was stunned by this and told her that my dad broke his ankle. She said, Maybe they just said that to hide the bruises. In reality, I know she said this because she is divorced. Big surprise. And she had been forced back to the US after her ex-boyfriend called immigration to get her kicked out of Scotland. But then my husband told her I was pregnant. We were met with silence, then a half-hearted congrats. My husband was crushed from a lack of response and I was done with her. I went to my Facebook that night and deleted her. She found out that she was deleted when she tried to tag me in a post about my pregnancy. She wanted the validation of likes she would get. Apparently, when she saw I deleted her, she deleted her own Facebook account out of spite and is now miserable without being able to post. She doesn't like Instagram or Snap and Facebook was the only place she could get validation. I'm more than a little amused that she so desperately wants her social media but can't create another account without acknowledging that she deleted her last account out of spite and will do anything to save face. Oh my gosh, she sounds like a nightmare. How do you do it, man? You <laughs> I couldn't do that. I couldn't. <laughs> A neighbor goes up to my house in her PJs and sits right next to my room to talk over her cell phone. I start up blasting music right next to the window she talks at. So a bit of context, I live in an apartment complex which is huge. 53 buildings, 6 floors each, 4 apartments each floor. We've all got common spaces to walk, hang out, work out and walk our pets. I've been living here with my girlfriend and our dog for a year and a half in a first floor apartment. And just recently, about a couple of days ago, this woman walks up with a phone at night in her PJs and just has the longest conversations right outside our bedroom. It happens around eight to nine and she's there for quite some time. Yesterday, I just pulled the blinds open, looked at her and closed them back. She didn't move until she was done. Today, when I got home from work, I saw she was already there. So I took my speaker and said it as loudly as possible right next to the window she sits at. 
I went to bed with my girlfriend around 10.30 to 11 and she wasn't there anymore, but couldn't check if the speaker thing worked or not in an immediate manner. I fully know it's petty as hell to do so, mainly because I don't see any argument as to why she would have to leave. Right outside our apartment isn't part of our apartment and it's a shared space with the whole community, although I find it wildly annoying. I don't think if I were to file a complaint that it would be successful at all, so I've chosen pettiness. I've also thought of putting large plants and pots on that specific place, or just wetting the floor vastly so she won't be able to sit. What would you guys do? You know what I'd do? I'd buy like a creepy clown costume off Amazon and just like start tapping the window and then slowly poke my creepy clown head out and hopefully you would have scared her enough that she'll never come back again. <laughs> Doctor refuses to do his job. Let's do this then. To set the story, I have epilepsy that is controlled as long as I take my medication. This means I am allowed to drive, I just have to have my neurologist fill out a form basically giving me permission at least once a year. Since I am controlled, I usually only have maintenance appointments about once a year. I also am married with four kids. So my being able to drive is important to our daily routine. It's also important to know that my husband has a job where every four to eight years we have to move. This takes place about one or two years ago with our most recent move. When we move, one of the first things I do is find doctors and schedule appointments for everyone. After getting established with a general doctor, I got a referral to the local neurology department. To go anywhere else is like a 40 minute drive. Day of the first appointment comes and everything goes smoothly. No red flags. I've been in the medical rodeo here in the US for as long as I can remember, so I can usually sense a bad doctor quickly. The hospital doesn't have the best reputation, so I was cautiously optimistic. After that appointment, I was hopeful. Big mistake. A couple months later, I get the yearly letter from the state in the mail requesting a new driving form be filled out by my neurologist. I call my neurologist and find out their procedure. They tell me I can drop it off and they will send it in. My husband offers to take it on his way to work because it's just down the road from work and he knows I hate their parking lot. He drops it off and we assume all is good. They usually give you about six months to get this form in. So about six months later, I receive a letter from the state saying the form was never received and my license is suspended. Obviously, I am wondering what the hell happened. I did everything on my end. So I call the doctor's office. This is where the nightmare begins. After that annoying menu all doctor offices have when you call, I finally reach a real person. I tell her the situation and ask if they sent in the form. Oh, I am sorry, ma'am. Dr. Smith doesn't fill out forms. He just throws those away. A moment of silence because I was caught off guard by that one. I called several months ago and was assured if I dropped it off, he would fill it out and send it in. Sorry, he won't feel that out. He literally has us throw them straight in the trash. He is required by the state to fill out this form. Does he need me to walk him through it? At this point, I was angry and my husband who was listening offered to take over. He knew I was about to go off and thought if he kept calm, it could be worked out. He also is familiar with the crappy medical system and has helped people talk to doctors before. It comes with his job. My husband was on the phone for over an hour and had to call a patient advocate at the hospital to get them to do anything. I was stewing nearby and growing more and more angry. When he hung up, he said the doctor's office reluctantly agreed to fill out the form and the head nurse and patient advocate would make sure it got done. If it had ended there, I might have let things go and just moved on to another doctor. But no, they filled out the form wrong at least three times. These forms are super easy and take doctors maybe 30 seconds to fill out for me. I have watched them fill it out. He basically kept checking a box that implied he didn't treat me for epilepsy and my general doctor had to do it. Meaning this lazy guy was trying to get someone else to do it. The flaw in that though is I grew up dealing with this crap and I was by now very educated on how this was supposed to go. So I call them again. I decided to unleash my anger. Neurology department, how can I help you? I have sent over my form from the state four times now to be filled out. Once it was thrown out, three times it was filled out wrong. I need Dr. Smith to fill out this form today. Your general doctor is supposed to do it. My general doctor does not treat my epilepsy. 
Dr. Smith does. Are you stupid? The doctor treating my epilepsy has to fill it out. It's pretty easy actually, but if it's too hard for the doctor, I can walk him through it. Or I can call my old neurologist and she can teach him. It's not really required. We don't have to do that. Nice try. I've been doing this for over 10 years. State law requires he fill out this form. Do I need to talk to a lawyer? Oh, um, yeah, just come by and it'll be taken care of. My husband, the mediator, stepped in and drove to the hospital with me to get this taken care of. When we get there, he could tell that the drive just gave me more time to build more anger up. He asked if he could take the form in for me. I happily handed over the form where I had highlighted what needed to be filled out and also written step-by-step -step instructions on how to fill out the form. I also reminded him if this went wrong again, I would be suing and to let them know I would be reporting him to the state medical board. He was at first concerned that the state wouldn't take a highlighted form but I knew they could very easily print a new one off. He took it in and instead of handing it to the desk, he asked for the head nurse. He waited till it was filled out and had printed proof that it had been sent in. I looked at the copy and knew the nurse trying to desperately resolve an unwinnable situation had forged the doctor's signature. No hate to the nurse, just had a bad boss. After I got my confirmation, I had my license again. I reported him to the hospital board, filed complaints anywhere in the hospital that could hold him accountable, and made a detailed complaint to the state medical board. I also left scathing reviews online as well. I found a new neurologist 40 minutes away, and the driver's a nice break away from the kids. Shortly after, I reported him to the state medical board, I received a letter saying they were opening an investigation into his conduct and that the entire department's conduct. They also asked to fill out forms stating I was okay with the investigation and yada yada. I filled it out and faxed it over. I found out about a year later that apparently he now has signs hanging everywhere basically saying, if you are mean to me, I will be mean to you. The people said they saw those signs and left and decided also 40 minutes later, wasn't that bad of a drive? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I was also told since then they have had trouble keeping supporting staff in that department. I assume there were some sort of consequences for him to hang signs everywhere. I think we've all had a really, really bad doctor experience once. You know, like, it, it's these people's jobs. And <laughs> I know it's really hard to work with customers. Customer service is a nightmare. But if you treat people badly, they're going to treat you badly as well, okay? It, it's not like you're just going to get a, a nice person who just thinks, Oh, it's okay. He's treating me badly. I must treat him back nicely again. Those people are rare, okay? <laughs> I love this subreddit. The stories here are so crazy.